Welcome to the Paradigm Shift episode 114. So you can tell I'm a little under the weather for the first time in about 10 years, uh, running around like a lunatic right now. But there's no place in the world I'd rather be. I could not be more excited. We have a very special guest on today. Uh, but first, we're going to bring on my partner in crime, Big Dave, the sex goose. And let's get this party started. I see everybody's out today. Uh, happy long holiday weekend. Let's have some fun, guys. Drop something that you're very excited about right now in the chats. Let's get the energy going. Right. Chess in the house. Big Maddie, we're going to bring you on lesson five. Lesson five. Uncle Dave. What's up, Craig? Eagle Seagull, not feeling well. We got to heal that immediately, my brother. Bring that healing yeah. through you. My, it happens, though. I haven't been sick in years, but I think I'm just doing so much. Also ran a half marathon in the rain. All good things. <laughs> I, think that, I think that probably contributed to it, running a half marathon in the rain. Yeah, it probably did help. But you're looking super handsome as always. How are you, you sex boots? I'm doing well, but a lot of people are talking. I got, you know, a lot of interviews every week and you are a uh, topic and subject matter to many conversations that I have. And there was actually a question that came up this week again, and they were wondering why you call me the sex goose. <laughs> why do you think that is? I think it's a, a, uh, a latent attraction that you have uh, to middle-aged mutant turtles like myself. There is a certain sexual attraction that you can't deny. And now that you're getting married, uh, you're projecting uh, that to make sure that everybody else knows how sexy I am. So a little bit of yes and a little bit of no, let me explain. It's not middle-aged white men in general. It's you, specifically and intentionally. Okay, good. So I'll take the moniker, I'll take the label, I'll take the logo and uh, we'll do the best with it and see if anybody else agrees with you. But thank you very much for finding me so attractive. My pleasure. Thank you for being so attractive. <laughs> I can't wait to bring on our guest. He's a really good kid. He's making some major noise right now. But before we do, as always, I'm going to hit you with a couple questions. Um, I was going through your content early this morning. I, I try to do it daily, as everybody should. And I love the things that you talk about, David. And one of the things you talk about most recently, specifically, is how nothing changes your life more than perspective. And that's something that we can control because it comes within. Why is that so significant? Well, I saw a post of yours as well about pain and the meaning of the past. Um, and I will tell you that I talk about the indicators of uh, the fear of the past or fear of the future, the indicators of the ego-based uh, prescribed egotistical consciousness of guilt and resentment of the past, anxiety and worry. Um, and all of those are perception based. And through that perception, uh, I have now found kind of two uh, feeling indicators that are beyond a conscious, subconscious or unconscious indicator, like a need to be right, a need to be offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry or guilty. Uh, and it came up in a coaching call. Uh, I have found that if we use as an indicator, um, a feeling of irritation. So if we're irritated in any way, inflamed in any way, um, or um, if we're sensitive to something, right? So, something hurts our feelings in, in too much of a way. If we're irritated or sensitive, those are two great indicators that you have to shift your perception, your meaning, and align it with where you think you want to be or better and not have it be aligned with either resistance, more shortages, voids, obstacles, more of what you don't want, what other people want, what's missing, or even worse, align it with an acceleration to where you don't want to be. And I think this has been a very simple articulation to help people understand, man, if I'm irritated or I'm feeling sensitive, I got to stop, drop, and roll, put myself, remind, remember, and recollect back into my higher self, my higher pursuit, my higher potential. Is so good because when you when you have those feelings essentially it's feedback so now you can transform from reactive to proactive and do something about it absolutely and i will tell you because you know i'm transparent with everyone i'm blessed to coach uh, craig he's one of the best mentees uh that i've ever had he's living proof of how to enjoy the consistent persistent pursuit of his potential but i screwed up and missed when i was at vcon i missed my coaching call and I'm accountable, and, and I was irritated and sensitive 
uh, for myself to do that. But I also was irritated and sensitive to the fact that Craig is like, oh, it's okay. We'll just do the next one. And it took me a little while to stop, drop, and roll because I felt like, one, I cheated him. But then I felt even worse that he was cheating himself, that uh, somehow I made it personal about me, that he didn't value the session enough, where it could have been my perception, could have been, oh, I do so much for Craig, he doesn't give a shit, and he probably doesn't want to get in my way because he sees me traveling from VCon to Vegas to home, and he knows you know, I'm dealing with some personal stuff as well, and he's being a kind friend for all that I've done for him. But my media perception was one of myself, ego, going, oh, he doesn't value my coaching because he wants to wait till the next time. And then I rethought about it. And I said, no, I'm going to choose to have this perception that, you know, we have such a great relationship. He's let me off the hook. And, uh, you know, and, and I used to do it the other way so much. I'm like, why am I causing myself problems with the people that love me the most and I'm proud of the most? Yeah. I appreciate that vulnerability and transparency. I love that. That's how we learn and grow. And I, by the way, I love you for not not making me uh, or or you know having me reschedule or whatever, and just providing that value and, and respecting it so much that it was such a huge compliment when I put and took the right perception based off of what I want in our relationship, not what I don't want. Yeah, beautifully said. And, and you're more than just a mentor to me. You know that. Oh, love. You know, lovers. We know, we know that. You already said that. <laughs> Dave, I wanted. To, I know that I want to bring on Maddie. Maddie, I hope you have an extra five minutes. I just wanted to ask one more question to Dave Percy because this one I think was really interesting. I was looking at your content, and I know you said that one of the reasons why you lost a hundred million um, is because you didn't feel worthy of receiving, and you had interference. And I'm curious because of that very realization, whether it was that time period or a different. I'm assuming that it was only a matter of time before you lost that because the container couldn't really receive it. Is that right? It is only a matter of time that it doesn't rear its ugly head uh, the predominant amount of time, meaning that do I have worthiness issues every day? I just spend minutes and moments there. So uh, the majority of my time is spent in the trajectory of I am happy, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am worthy. And then minutes and moments are spent in what am I doing to interfere with it? Like being insecure, not feeling worthy of all that I have in my life now, instead of feeling so blessed that I have an extraordinary life with everything I ever dreamed of. Why would I feel unworthy if I've been blessed and anointed? You really are a sex octopus. It's unbelievable. I'm going to bring on um, handsome Matt Mayberry right now. I'm really excited about him. Great kid. Great guy. Doing some great things. And the audience is for a treat right now. Nope. Dave, what are you doing for the long holiday weekend? Anything interesting? Oh, very much. I'm, I'm doing a ton in sports. So I'm playing tennis with my wife, golf with my 13-year-old, family dinners and lunches. And there's double M right there. The incredible Matty Mac. How you guys Matt. doing? Yeah. Amazing. It's good to hear. Uh, Craig calling someone else young, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm now the third most handsome cat on this live. <laughs> Matt, how are you doing? Thank you I'm, for joining us, brother. I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. Excited. Yeah, awesome. I'm, really, I'm really excited about this conversation. Matt, you and I connected a little while back, and we instantly became friends, and you're doing some awesome stuff. I know your book recently just hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller. Congratulations. And you talk a lot about culture, but there's really so many things that we could talk about. One of the things that I saw recently when I was checking out your content, which everyone should do immediately after this conversation, as I always say about Dave, is you talk about kind of like greatness and how it's not the thing that makes us great because a lot of the characteristics are transferable, such as coaching and then bringing that into the business world and athletics and, and so forth. How do you take the principles from one thing, even if you don't have experience in this new arena, but bring those characteristics to make you successful in a totally different platform? Yeah. Fantastic question. You know, something I talk a lot about is re really probably one of the greatest coaches and mentors I had throughout the course of my life. His name was Terry Hetner, right? So my college coach at Indiana University, and he always used to have this mantra, you know, GBT. It was written on our shorts, our you know, shirts. I mean, everything we did was focused around and really revolved around GBT, which stands for Get Better Today. You know, and for me, it really is so much greatness is about that process. It's about immersing yourself in that 
you know, what is the mindset, the perspective, the skill sets? What kind of person do I have to become in order to get to that end destination? Um, so for me, when that transition started of away from being an you know, athlete, so much of my life ever since I was five years old was focused on the game of football and baseball, right? So then once I didn't have that identity anymore, you know, it really, you know, came down to immersing myself in that process. What can I do today to elevate my potential? What can I do today to get around champions and people winning and, and performing at a very high level and, and really what I want to be doing? So for me, uh, and now even in the work that I do with a lot of C-suite executive teams, it, it still is that, right? You want to build a great culture? Okay, what is the process? You know, you want to reinvent your strategy or go to market in a different, completely way? What is the process? Uh, so f really for me, Craig, I mean, you know, that was, that's been the foundation for my life, right? Getting into a new, uh, you know, industry, getting into starting a new business, whatever that is, it's not that end goal. You got to have that vision, but then it's now, what do I have to do to get to that goal? Dave Frequency, Big Dave? Yeah, man. Hey, Matt, it's amazing. And uh, just a big shout out to IU. Uh, my second daughter just graduated uh, IU as well. And we have a couple of homes down there in Bloomington. Uh, Pizzo uh, is a good friend of mine and Sage Steele and of course Cuban is the legend of IU legend. John Cougar Mellencamp and Teddy so I got so many connections to IU driving me crazy <laughs> what an extraordinary school and it was well worth a couple hundred grand that they took from me for my daughter to go there by the way so she didn't get a football scholarship like you beautiful uh, but most cool beautiful school beautiful city too so uh, to that end, though, I want to start with one of my favorite quotes, because I think about it when I think about the culture that's built at IU in the sports program, whether it's football or Coach Woodson, uh, there's a friend of mine, yeah. the basketball coach, probably one of the most time efficient people I've ever met as well. If anybody ever wants to learn how to utilize time, go to an IU basketball practice. He runs like six practices within one. It's an incredible feat. Uh, but if you want to be great like Matt, it starts with heart. If you want to be amazing, it's going to start with the impossible. And it starts those hard and impossible things with having the right culture that's based off of values, daily practices, and an execution model that is aligned with the skills, knowledge, and desire of each individual within the context of the values, practices, and execution model that you create. And Matt's one of the best in the world at coming into those C-suites, to coming into corporations and teaching them what he's learned, not only in sports, but applying it in business of how to build a culture of values, daily practices, and the execution model, which is one thing, but what makes it unique and what makes your book unique too, is I love the way, uh, at least what I took from it, that you take the individuals and you look at their strengths, their skills, their knowledge of what and who and their desires and align them with the values, practices, and execution model. I think a lot of people are missing that component. They're really great at talking to people and saying, here's the values, gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, effective communication. Here's your daily practices, Covey, and blah, 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 <laughs> Napoleon Hill. And then here's an execution model that'll work for you. And then they forgot that there's a whole bunch of people, individuals, that need to work within the context of that. And uh, if you haven't read the book, you should. If you haven't hired Matt, you should because he's one of the few people that get the individuality within the context of values, practices, and execution. Yeah. No doubt why I went to I, you, by the way. I appreciate that, Dave. I, I appreciate that so much. Yeah. This is so much fun. Love both of you so much. Matty, I saw you write something about this, and I'm not sure if it came from you, but obviously it was important to you, and I thought it was really cool. And you were talking about the journey. Is it more about becoming something or unbecoming? everything that isn't you. And I couldn't help but think of words, authenticity and congruency. I'm curious, why was that so special to you? Another phenomenal question. You know, I, I, I really believe in my heart of hearts. You know, I, I think so much of the process, as I mentioned in the beginning, is about becoming, right? So that evolution, that journey of becoming the best version of yourself, whatever that is, right? Everybody's perception of success and making a difference is going to be unique to their own story and their sphere of life. You know, but for me, I really believe that in order to be great, you have to really focus on also, what do I have to, you know, unbecome? What do I have to remove from my life? And really focus on the 80-20 rule, like the Pareto principle. I'm a huge believer in that, right? I mean, I, I really believe that 20% of what you're going to do is going to drive 80% of your results, right? In your personal life and your professional life, right? There's very few things that are going to have a significant impact on your marriage. There's very few things that's going to have a significant impact on your business. 
Um, and I think it's constantly taking, you know, reinvention of, of looking at how can I reinvent my life and look at it from a perspective of where do I want to go, but then also look at the mindset and perception and the skill sets and also focus on what are the processes and, and really the mindsets also that I have to remove from my life. Because so much for me, uh, Craig and Davis, is, is really focusing on removing a certain story I had that was playing internally in my head. Right. And I think to any anytime you want to go to that new phase of life, right, that new phase of your business, you know, what story are you telling yourself? Because so many of us right, are telling a limited story. Right. I can't do this. I, I wasn't raised with this. I don't have the resources for this. Um, you know, so for me, when I started to focus on how can I unbecome and remove some of these limiting stories, my life transformed. My life changed in so many ways. And to be honest with you, that's one of the very first things I do with uh, leadership teams, right? I mean, you know, 25, 35 year careers, you'd be shocked and astonished to realize that so many of them, right, have a certain story that they're telling themselves about their business or their leadership or whatever that is. So uh, I, I think they're equally important, you know, Craig, I think you have to focus on wh who do I want to become, but then also what do I have to unbecome in my life? You speak in my language now, and, and there's such power in letting go, right, Dave? Yeah. yeah. At first, you can never overachieve your own self-image and those self-stories, self-belief and self-lessons are the limitations of uh, what we are or are becoming in an infinite unified system of thought. Uh, and most people spend most of their time out of that faith. And that's the 80-20 rule in a mathematical context of spirituality, which is why 20% of what we do creates what we are becoming. Part of unbecoming is unlearning and being in the largest class of people that need to unlearn things, being a white middle-aged male in the corporate world. Uh, you know, I, uh, with John Gruden, uh, where it was first came up, I was dealing with uh, Darren Waller and John Gruden and, uh, Gruden had some things uh, that he did uh, that were systematically and socialized into him uh, because the guy has really good intentions. Jo jo John Gruden has great intentions, but he got caught because he didn't unlearn certain things. And uh, it was, and, and I find the majority of the people need to take a step back and say, okay, I, I know this was okay 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. In fact, it was promoted and applauded and celebrated, but I got to unlearn this because we've learned better now and I don't want to limit my own self-image and I don't want to limit uh, the abundant infinite system unified with thought uh, that I want to be a part and parcel to, to live to my best self, my potential. And uh, I think it's a really wise old soul statement when somebody talks about unbecoming or unlearning uh, it's the next level of awareness or enlightenment and highly encourage once again to read about it, to follow Matt, because he's an old soul that's uh, spewing uh, <laughs> wisdom everywhere. Uh, and I really enjoy your content as well. I appreciate that. Thank you so because, much. There's a chapter in, in my book, but I wanted this conversation to be about you guys today as I talk about uninstalling and, and then reinstall something that's more in alignment with who you're becoming. So that's why I said you speak in my language. Dave, we'll, we'll land the plane with this one. I, I know it's Saturday, guys, and it's a great opening <laughs> guys are here, and it's a holiday weekend. Matt, let's not give away too much, but I think leadership and culture, people probably associate it with business, but it's really applicable for anyone in any capacity, whether you're leading your children or, or setting an example, whatever the case may be. What are maybe one or two really key leadership mindset skills that somebody can extract from this conversation right now and begin to apply? It has nothing to do with your role, your current rank, your title, regardless of what a certain, you know, your LinkedIn bio says or what's on the company's website. Leadership is waking up every single day with the mentality and mindset that I'm going to influence and impact another human being, right? If you do that, right, just one person, you're a leader. And, and I think so many people get caught up in, um, you know, the outside external noise, right, of like, this is what success is, or this is what you have to have by your 45 and what you have to do. And uh, and also in the corporate world, right? I mean, this is what my title is, you know? And I think the best leaders, the most influential people I've ever been around, right? Some of them even were lower level managers, right? Where they had more influence, they had more impact than even the COO of a, a 19,000 person organization. So for me, I mean, the, the, the core mindset of that is waking up every single day with the intentionality that I'm gonna make a difference in the life of another human being. If you do that, you're a leader, right? And then you start doing that day in and day out, the domino effect of that is just, it transcends every area of your life. I think you really, if you want to become a better husband, it starts there. If you want to become a better father, it starts there. 
Uh, it's really that mindset of, of waking up every single day after you, you list those three things that you're grateful for, you know, look at that calendar. What, what, who are the people I'm meeting with today that I can pour into their life some way, somehow, right? And I think when you start thinking like that, the creative ideas and solutions start coming to mind. And to me, that, that's where greatness is cultivated, right? It's waking up every day with that burning desire. It's so beautiful. And David, I want to pass it to you. But one, one thing that I have in my head is like, it's that mentality that the camera is always on, right? Like, even when you're by yourself, like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And that's how you have the ability to influence everybody. Dave, take it away. Yeah, I just have a simple addition to the wisdom again. And it's just that leaders also are intelligent followers. Uh, and life's about lessons. The lessons Absolutely. keep on coming until we learn them. And if you truly want to be a leader at home, in the community, in the world, at your business, wherever you are on the field, uh, the greatest leaders are intelligent followers. Intelligence is a aggregation of intuition, inspiration, and information. Uh, and if you carry uh, that desire to be the best that you can be, to be what you must be, uh, then you're going to be an intelligent follower, which will be conducive to Love being that. a great leader. Uh, so uh, just wanted to add that to the genius that my two young, uh, <laughs> unbelievable leaders uh, are sharing with everyone. And I really respect both of you for taking the time. When I was your age, there was no way on a Saturday morning uh, that I would have uh, been sharing any of the dummy tax that I've paid. And I just respect and uh, am elated uh, that there's people like you two out there helping so many people and impacting them. I will add as we, we land the plane, Craggy Poo, uh, I heard someone say, you know, one, one simple thing that you can do each day is go out, especially if you're in New York City, because it's so easy, and just let somebody know they're not alone. Mm. Very simple way to be kind to your future self and do a good deed. It's an amazing, powerful tool to let someone know they're not alone. Love, Love that. that. Amen. Yeah, and everybody, if you could do one thing for us, go grab Maddie's new book. It's phenomenal. It's applicable and universal for where you are in, in any arena of life. Thank and pre you so much. Pre-order Craig's, pre Craig's book. And pre-order Craig's book, yes. And, and get my book for free. <laughs> get my book for free. <laughs> yeah, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much for this awesome Thanks, guys. I'll connect, yeah, I'll connect with you both over the weekend. I love you guys. Holiday Have a good one. Care. Thank you so much. Great to see you, man. Bye, guys. Maddie, go IU. <laughs> awesome conversation guys if you guys weren't familiar with maddie yet uh go check out all the cool stuff he's got going on he's phenomenal um great guy ton of experience and and the way he articulates things are very digestible and beautiful definitely check out his book dave is always my co-pilot my sex goose i love you uh can't wait to give you a hug in person sooner than later for everyone else out there let's have a great holiday weekend definitely keep your foot on the gas sharpen the axe uh, move the needle, but also take some time to recharge and disconnect and and refill your cup. Spend some time with family, whatever that looks like for you. That's important. That's something that I need to do. As you can see, I'm a little bit run down. I actually look like shit, too, now that I'm looking at myself. I could probably use a shave. Um, but there's no place in the world I'd rather be than with all of you today. The reinvention formula is available for pre-order. Now we're giving away awesome bonuses and incentives for anybody that snatches a copy. You're going to get access to what I believe will be the greatest live summit you've ever seen for the very price of the book. I uh, love you guys so much. Let's have a great weekend.